Hey there, AP Calculus. This is 5.1, part two. So I'm gonna go through a few more examples where we have to find the intervals of increasing and decreasing, uh, determine the concavity, and then talk about points of inflection. So first example is number eight on the digital handout that I posted on Google Classroom. We're given the function f of x equals five plus 12x minus x cubed. Now from your pre-calculus days, I would hope that you guys would have kind of an understanding of what this graph looks like before we even get started. The fact that the leading power is odd, the fact that the negative, uh, the leading coefficient is negative, and the fact that you have multiple x's in here, I would hope you guys would remember that it's reflected vertically and then has one of these deals happening. We can be pretty certain that this is going to follow a similar type of approach that this graph does, which means we're going to have decreasing and then increasing and then decreasing again. Furthermore, points of inflection, there's going to be one here for sure that changes from holding water up to uh, pushing water down. So. That's what you guys should have gleaned from the previous videos. Let's dig in here. All right, so part A, intervals of increasing and decreasing. So intervals of increasing and decreasing. First thing you gotta do is find the derivative. That's gonna be 0 plus 12 minus 3x squared. <coughs> okay? Now, the intervals of increasing and decreasing are, are going to be determined by a change in the direction of the slopes of the tangent lines. Okay? So the derivative basically gives us a bunch of slopes of tangent lines. So when the slope of the tangent line is 0, we're talking about this part here and that part there. And those seem to be the places where we shift from decreasing to increasing, back to decreasing again, okay? So that's why we're setting the derivative equal to zero. All right, I'm gonna add three x squared to both sides, divide both sides by three, and then square root both sides. And by square rooting, I create a plus or minus Two. All right, so these right here are affectionately called the crumbers. Uh, textbooks call them critical numbers. The critical numbers are the places that we need to, to, to sort of like bound our intervals that we need to test. So from, so from negative infinity to negative two, that's going to be... That's going to be an interval that's either increasing or decreasing. Then we need to test negative 2 to positive 2 and 2 to infinity. So pick a number between, pick a number in between, pick a number in between. And then we're testing it into the original f prime. Plug into the untouched f prime. So that's, that's this right here. If it's positive, we have intervals that are increasing because all the derivatives would be positive. All the slopes of the tangent lines would be positive. That's what we're testing here. So negative 3. You plug it in for x squared. Negative 3 squared is 9 times negative 3. That's negative 27. 12 minus 27 is a negative number. If you try 0, that's going to be 12 minus 0. That's positive. And then 3, that's going to be 12 minus 3 times 3 times 3. That's going to be a negative 1 as well. So this tells us that our function f is increasing over the interval negative 2 
to 2. F is decreasing. over negative infinity to negative two. And if you want to be official, you can put that little union symbol in there in union with two to infinity. So that's part A. That's what are the intervals of increasing and decreasing for this function. Now, what I'm going to do is give us some room here. I'm going to erase all this stuff so that we can get to part two a little more accessibly. So part B, describe the concavity. Now the concavity is basically this idea that you're holding water up or pushing it down. It's all, it's all a product of the second derivative. So here it's concave up, concave up, concave up, concave up, concave up. At that point, it's pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down. Oh yeah, by the way, with the intervals of increasing and decreasing, I should have pointed back to this graph to say, it makes sense that it's decreasing. And then that little sliver in between, negative 2 to 2, it's increasing again. And then from 2 to infinity, it's decreasing. Sorry about that wasted educational moment. So describe the concavity. We left off with our derivative equaling 12 minus 3x squared. So we need to take the second derivative to describe the concavity. We need the second derivative to describe concavity. You know, ever since Khan Academy came out, I've had a hard time saying concavity without saying Khan Academy. Weird. That was their plan all along. Okay, so second derivative is 0 minus 6x, so negative 6x. Now what you do here is you set it equal to 0 because the zeros are going to be those neutral places where you're neither holding water up or pushing it down. Okay, so it's a neutral second derivative. And at this point, your second derivative critical numbers, well, there's only one of them. It's just x equals 0. So that's going to dictate the terms of our intervals. Our intervals are going to be negative infinity to 0, and then 0 to infinity. Pick a point less than 0, pick a point greater than 0, and we are testing them by plugging into f double prime. In this case, it's negative 6x. So plug negative 1 in here. You get negative 6 times negative 1. That's positive. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. Our drawing, everything's being pushed up as we move along. Plug in 1, negative 6 times 1. That's negative. Makes sense. Everything's being pushed down on our sort of rough sketch. So you are concave up. Over the interval negative infinity to 0. You are concave down. Over the interval 0 to infinity. So there's part B. Part C is just naming the points of inflection. So uh, we don't really need that here. 
points of inflection are places where the concavity shifts from up to down or down to up. So you got to ask yourself, did the concavity shift here? Yeah, it went from up to down. Where was the point at which it shifted? X equals zero. So at X equals zero, we have an inflection point. The literal point of inflection will be plug it into the original. Like it's a it's a point, right? A point is an ordered pair. It's an x comma y. So the x value for our point of inflection is x equals zero. The actual point of inflection would be plug in zero here. You get five. It's it's technically zero five. Although I think in the instructions on that last homework assignment, you just had to find the x coordinate. All right, so got it? All right, let's do one more example, um, perhaps one where you have to actually uh, check 